In this screencast, we are going to use a Google spreadsheet to do a whole bunch of math for us. Normally when we're doing math, we try to do math in as few steps as possible, but in this case, we're going to learn how to do our calculations in much smaller steps, which if we were doing them by hand would seem almost infantile, but since the computer is doing it, it doesn't make any difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to organize it, make it more logical, make it more straightforward, such that we can do this. In this example, I have some baseballs, and I know their mass in pounds, and then the baseballs were thrown, and their velocity was measured when in miles per hour. And so our question here is we want to calculate the kinetic energy of these baseballs, both individually and as an average, and our formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And the units that we want are in what are called joules, which is kilograms meters squared per second squared. And this is sort of how we're going to start these kinds of calculations. So we do this for lab all semester long. You're going to be told sort of like, okay, here are the, the values that you're going to measure. And you're going to be told what you need to finish your answer in. In this case, we need our answer to be in joules because we're calculating kinetic energy. This is the information that we're given. And what we have to do is we have to build the spreadsheet to do all of these calculations. Now, before I actually set up the spreadsheet, I'm going to look at, I'm going to sort of like come up with a plan. The reason I'm going to come up with a plan is because it's going to make my life a whole lot easier when I'm designing the spreadsheet. And you're going to have to do these sort of what are called calculation plans for prelabs. And so here's an example of one sort of complete. You'll, you would sort of build this. So again, in this case, we're given the mass of some baseballs in pounds and their velocity is in miles per hour, and we are being asked to calculate the average kinetic energy in, in joules of those thrown baseballs. And kinetic energy, again, is you take the mass of the object and multiply it by the square of the velocity, and we want it to be in joules, and a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So what that means, since we know we have to be in kiljoules, so I put kiljoules down here, or kinetic energy in joules down here sort of as my final point. And then I have the square up here, which is, okay, I'm given baseball mass in pounds and the velocity in miles per hour. So in these squares, if you will, are the raw data that I'm going to measure, if you will, in lab. And then this last one is the calculated value, basically where I'm going to stop. So I know to use this formula that it's one half mv squared, and I know that the mass needs to be in kilograms because a joule is kilogram. So if I look at that part, that means if I'm given the mass of the baseball in pounds, I need to convert that mass of pounds into kilograms. And I know, because I did some other research, that one pound is equal to 0.4546 kilograms. That's actually my conversion factor. That'll become important later. So I take whatever number of pounds, I multiply by 0.4546, and that will tell me the number of kilograms. I also know that my velocity needs to be in meters per second, because again, a joule is kilogram meters squared per second squared, so the velocity needs to be in meters per second. I'm in, my data is in miles per hour. I need to convert that into meters per second, and because I did some other research, I determined that one mile per hour is equal to 0.44 six nine meters per second and that one mile per hour is equal to this and this one pound is equal to this that will become important when we do our calculation so this mass in kilogram and this velocity in meters per second i'm going to call those sort of like intermediate calculations then so what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of the baseball in pounds and convert that into kilograms we're going to take the velocity which is given to us in miles per hour we're going to convert that in meters per second then we're going to take that mass that velocity run it through our kinetic energy formula to get our kinetic energy in joules. All right, so let's go back to our spreadsheet. And again, here we have our mass in pounds, velocity in miles per hour. So now that I have my, we're gonna keep going back and forth between sort of our, our plan here and our data. So I know I'm, I have um, a couple of intermediate calculations. I got the mass in kilograms and I need to know velocity in meters per second. And then once I know those, my next calculation is gonna be the kinetic energy in joules. So I'm going to label some, so I'm going to have mass in meters per second, and I want to know velocity in meters per second. Sorry, mass is not in meters per second, mass is in 
mass in kilograms. Now the reason why I actually put mass in kilograms, velocity in meters per second, is because you can't put units, and units are very important, you can't put a unit inside a, a spreadsheet cell. It has to be an actual real number. So that's why we're very careful about labeling all of our columns in terms of what it is and what unit it is, because I can't put grams or velocity or anything in there. All right, so, oh, and then we're also going to calculate the kinetic energy in units of joules. And you notice also I put down here that kinetic, the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared in the units of joules, kilograms per meter squared per second squared. Okay, so let's do this one at a time. So we know that the mass in, we converting mass in pounds into mass in kilograms, we know we have to multiply it by 0.4546. Now we're going to have to multiply all of these numbers by the same number. These are yellow cells. Those represent actual um, numerical measured values. And I'm going to leave these sort of unhighlighted. And this is just, again, for sort of communication purposes, that our, our data cells are going to be colored and our calculation cells are not. So that means we need to code, if you will, because these are all going to be programmed, all of these particular formulas. So I know that for the mass, the mass of the kilogram, I want to take. I'm going to, so I'm going to I'm going to click on that cell and I'm going to hit equals, and I know I need to take the mass in pounds. Oh, wait! I don't want to have to multiply it by. I don't want to actually type out that number four five four six. I'm actually going to make that a constant cell. So up here, up here, I'm going to say kilograms per pound. Right? And I know for every one pound is 0.4546 kilograms. 0 0.4546. And I also know, so now when I'm here, when I want to take the mass in pounds, I need to take this number in this cell, which is F5, and I need to multiply it by this cell, which is H2. You can't see it. Maybe I'll just move over here really quick. You'll see that our columns are numbered, our rows are numbered, and our columns are lettered. I had to adjust over the file. Okay, so for me to get the mass in kilograms, I need to, I'll press equal sign because I'm doing a formula. I'm going to take the number in this cell, and then I need to multiply that by the number in this cell. So I hit star, so it's F5 star H2. And then I hit enter, right? So the mass in kilograms is 0.559158. Now, I want to, I don't want to, have to retype this code all the time, so I'm going to hit, I'm going to, I want to copy the formula, so I hit Control C, I highlight that cell, hit Control C, then I go down, highlight the other ones, and I hit Control V. Now you'll notice that it's all wonky, because if you look on this cell, the f the the formula, if we go over here and look. So now we've highlighted this cell, and if we look up here in the formula bar, it says F6 times H3. So it took F6, which is this column, so it took our mass in pounds, but it multiplied by cell H3, not H2. So this is, shows you the difference between what are called relative cell locations and absolute cell locations. If we, we want, to, when we're taking the mass in kilograms, what we're basically saying here is go over two cells, go over two columns, and then multiply it by this number. And we want it to go to H2 all the time. So what we're going to do up here in our code, we're going to change that and put a dollar sign in front of the H and a dollar sign in front of the 2, and then hit Enter. Now I notice it doesn't change our number, but now what happens is if we hit Control c and then highlight this and hit Control v now you'll notice that when we copied the cell, so if we look at this cell, you see there's the F6, so it goes over two columns, but it multiplied by H2 again, and then the cell below it, F7 times H2, and then below that, F8 times H2. So you put a dollar sign in front of the H and in front of the 2, it makes what's called an absolute cell, whereas in this case, F8, as read in this cell, really means go over two cells. It's not an absolute cell, it's sort of a relative cell location. So now we have our masses in kilograms, and so now we're going to do a similar calculation for the velocity in meters per second. We know we need we want to put a conversion factor up here, and we know one mile per hour is 0.4469. So that's meters per second per
per mile per hour was 0 0.44, now I forgot what it was, 4469, 4469. Now you might think, why don't I just put in this cell, why don't I just hard code the 0.4546? Well, what happens if you realize later that you made a mistake in that your number, it wasn't 4546, it was something else. You don't have to go in and recode this particular cell, you can just recode this constant cell. And it makes it makes debugging the program, if you will, much, much easier. So in a similar way, so we gain velocity in meters per second, we hit equals because we're doing a formula, we're going to take our miles per hour, and we need to multiply it by our conversion factor, which is this. But again, we want that to be an absolute cell. And so in that case, we put our dollar sign in front of it, hit our control C, go down, hit our control V. Now we have our velocity in meters per second and our mass in kilograms. Okay, so our last column is the kinetic energy in meters in terms of units. So we have to take one half mv squared. So I have to take the mass, multiply by, I've got that two, and then I have to take it times the square of the velocity. So now I'm going to go to this cell. So we need to take, let's see, one half, so zero, I'm going to put in parentheses 0 0.5 then close parentheses, and then a star for multiply. And then we're going to multiply it by the mass, so we click the cell for the mass. Now we have to multiply it by the square of the velocity. Now the easiest way, if we're just doing a square, the easiest way of doing that is just clicking on that cell, so times I5, and then star, and then click on the cell again. I5. And that's 1 half m v v, so v squared. And there's our answer. Now we hit Control C, go down, Control V. There's our, we sort of copied our values. And if I want to do an average, that's easy. So I'm going to add another column or another row that is average. And I type in av, av average. Right there, it tells me how to actually code it. So you basically take the average. And you highlight the cells. So I want to take the average of the values of J5, J8. And I close parentheses. And so there's our average. That's our average energy, our average kinetic energy in units of joules. So our the last thing we want to talk about is significant figures. So obviously the spreadsheet will spit out as many significant figures as we want it doesn't understand the concept of significant figures, so we actually have to sort of like think about it. So in this case, we have masses and pounds to three significant figures. This is to three significant figures. We need our masses and our intermediate calculations. We don't want them to take them to an incredibly large amount. So our intermediate calculations, we normally report them to one significant figure past what it should be. So our new final answer should be three. And so our masses in kilograms and our velocity in meters per second should be three or four, but not a lot. So in this case, I want this to report this to say four. So because of the nature of these numbers, I can't talk about significant figures. Google doesn't understand significant figures. The spreadsheet doesn't understand. We have to tell it how many digits to place. So in this case, I'm going to go up to format number and custom decimals. And because of where it is, I, if I make it four decimal places, that's four significant figures. Whereas in the velocity, you'll see that the velocities, if I want four significant figures, I need to go to two decimal places. So I highlight those cells, format, number, custom decimals, two. So now it shows it to four significant figures. And then again, in our energy in joules, you'll notice that there's three numbers to the left of the decimal place, so far I want four significant figures, I gotta go to one decimal place, so I'm gonna highlight all of those, format, number, and what did I say, one decimal place? Oh, no, this is the final answer, so it can only be to three significant figures. So, because of our significant figure rules, that needs to not be four significant figures, that needs to be three significant figures. So, we want it to zero decimal places. And so that is our final answer. So there you go, the whole plan going from a plan to our spreadsheet with our final answer. Good luck.